Oshkosh Media is government programming on GovTV, community programming on Life TV, and community radio on Oshkosh FM 101.9. Welcome to the City Manager's Report, a look at city updates and a preview of the next Oshkosh Common Council meeting agenda. And thanks for joining us for another edition of the City Manager's Report. I'm Andy Raddick, and in a moment, we'll be joined by City Manager Mark Roloff. As usual, in the first half of today's show, we'll have some municipal news updates, including items from city departments and things happening in Oshkosh. In the second half, we'll highlight items from the upcoming Tuesday, December 13th, Oshkosh Common Council meeting agenda. And with that, we bring in our city manager, Mark Roloff. Mark, thank you for joining us today. Great to be here, Andy. Okay, very good. We have a lot of different things to talk about today, and this is our, our last uh, agenda preview type show for the year, so we'll get into it here. We have uh, over at the Oshkosh Fire Department, we uh, recently unveiled a new wall of honor, and uh, this is really quite a special thing. It really is. Uh, I want to thank uh, members of our fire department as well as retired members of our fire department who put a lot of personal time into putting together this, this wall of honor. And what it does, it, it honors both past and active members of the Oshkosh Fire Department who were or are veterans. Uh, and this list includes people dating all the way back to the Civil War. So a great legacy of service to both our, our armed forces as well as to the Oshkosh Fire Department. Mm -hmm. And, you know, really, uh, it, it, it takes a look at uh, different aspects. It, it even honors those who perished in the 9-11 attacks. Yeah, 9-11 uh, attacks, as well as any uh, firefighter who also died in the line of duty. So it's mm -hmm. a great wall of honor to honor you know, so many levels of service to our community and to our country. So we're really uh, proud of that. So, uh, again, like I had said, the funding for the wall was uh, it was provided by private individuals and businesses, but area veterans groups also participated. Mm -hmm. Our uh, the Oshkosh uh, local firefighters union mm -hmm. also participated. So a lot of great collaborations. Uh, I think w it's one of these projects when people ask, they think, you know, what can I do to help? And mm -hmm. a lot of people stepped up. It's quite uh, a beautiful uh, uh, way to honor uh, people who have served us. Uh, like I said, in both Oshkosh and in our armed forces. Sure, and at the actual um, uh, dedication of event itself, uh, there were several veterans groups present and, uh, and also several retired uh, members of the Oshkosh Fire Department. So, um, so, you know, very nice event. And that event was covered by Oshkosh Media, and so uh, we do have that uh, being televised on Oshkosh Media Gov TV. Uh, you can check the schedules on our website. And also on the Oshkosh Media YouTube channel, the, uh, the dedication event is, is there as well. So encourage everyone to tune in for that. Okay, uh, speaking of the Oshkosh Fire Department, they've been very active this year, as usual, with their food and toy drive, and they have one date remaining. We want pe people to be aware of that. Yeah, there's still one more chance for being out on the streets with it, but this is an annual toy drive. I believe it's their 24th year of this toy drive. They, they uh, our fire department walks the streets in designated routes. They collect items door to door on, on these specific nights. There's only one night left uh, for the collection and that's uh, Tuesday, December 13th uh, out of station 18. So uh, they'll accept donations of perishable food items, new or unwrapped gifts, um, wrapping paper tape so we can wrap the gifts, mm -hmm. as well as just plain old cash donations. And so that can be used for, for any purposes. But in addition to walking the streets uh, for, for one more time, mm -hmm. you can drop off any donations at any of our six fire stations through uh, between now and December 12th. So mm -hmm. uh, if, you, if it's not your neighborhood on December 13th, please be sure to drop by your local fire station and uh, show some support for this program. It's a wonderful program. Again, 24 years mm -hmm. uh, that our 
fire department folks have been doing this. Right, and they are also accepting monetary donations as well, and those will be uh, forwarded to a uh, scholarship fund for two graduating Oshkosh seniors who are enrolled in a police or fire science program. So that's pretty neat too. Yeah, and all the items donated uh, are gonna be donated to the Salvation Army and distributed through their distribution program. So we're mm -hmm. a great, uh, uh, great and happy to be cooperating with the Salvation Army in this initiative as well. Sure, and the Oshkosh Fire Department has uh, a, a bonanza of social media for this, uh, so you can check out their Food and Toy Drive Facebook page. Uh, they also have a Twitter account that highlights this and an Instagram, so uh, you, can, you can check it out there. And you can also check it out through the uh, uh, City of Oshkosh government uh, Facebook page, and there's a link there as well. So I uh, encourage people to check that out. Uh, over at the Downtown Transit Center, they've made a lot of changes this year, and a lot of these have been completed. Yeah, it's it's mostly completed, so I have to give that little caveat to it. Mm -hmm. But uh, we've been working through a good part of the summer and into the fall to make some renovations at our Transit Center. And again, our wonderful drone gives you an idea. This area that you're looking at here is a new building that... Uh, is going to be an area for a uh, driver comfort station, a supervisor office, as well as a place where you can buy bus passes right there on the site at the transit center rather than getting over, having to go over to the, uh, the transportation building, which uh, may not be necessarily convenient for you if you're out riding the bus. So um, we're happy to see that this uh, new center has updated lighting, security, cleaned and painted benches, new pavement, uh, and I mentioned the driver comfort station, the supervisor office, and of course, the bus pass station. Uh, but one of the things that's been missing the most has been that heated shelter. Right. Uh, so that has reopened, uh, and uh, that'll, be, uh, that'll be available uh, right away now. And then the supervisor building and the uh, comfort station still has to go through final inspections. Uh, so I know our drivers are very anxious to see that opened up. Uh, uh, so it makes it easier for them to take a break uh, during their very busy bus schedule. Right, right. And there are some aspects of this new transit center that are not quite complete yet, but I believe that those are weather dependent on getting those wrapped up. Yeah, that south driveway is open, but a part of the platform just isn't open yet. So, you know, we're still probably doing a, maybe a bus or two on the street that you have to load up over there, but we want people to be able to load safely. So we want to uh, get, get them uh, doing it at the bus station rather than out on the street. Sure, sure. You know, and the renovation has included uh, some safety upgrades, uh, increased security, and um, you know, just just eliminating some of those hazards and, th and things. So it's a it's an improvement all around. Yeah. So we're nearly done. Again, as you mentioned, that it's weather dependent. We're hoping to get it done. Uh, we still say this fall uh, mm -hmm. because fall is up until mm -hmm. a week before Christmas. So we're hoping to do that, but if not, we have to delay it. It'll get, it'll get finished up completely next spring. Mm -hmm. Okay, very good. All right, well, speaking of winter and uh, different types of things happening, uh, we have the Celebration of Lights over at the uh, Menominee Park, and that is opening uh, open now, uh, nightly through January 1st. And those, uh, uh, that's another wonderful thing that the Oshkosh Parks Department uh, is, is uh, involved with. Uh, and uh, there was some recognition last year by Travel and Leisure Magazine as recognizing the Celebration of Lights as being uh, the best Christmas lights display in Wisconsin. Yeah, we're really, uh, really pleased with that honor, but I, I want to make sure that everybody understands the Celebration of Lights is a private committee of, of uh, residents and citizens who care so much about it. The Parks Department works with them, but this is all them putting that together. We, we coordinate with them. So this is a volunteer group that does this, and they get recognition for the best lights display in Wisconsin. I think that says a lot to their commitment. So I want to thank and congratulate everybody, all the volunteers that are associated with Celebration of Lights for that. So um, I think part of it is it isn't just because it's a great light display, but also we do a lot of fundraising through that as well and a lot of uh, uh, support for people of need uh, during the holiday season. So for uh, you can, you know, there's admission fee to be paid, but there's also a discount that if you donate a hygiene item like soap or toothpaste or something like that, you'll actually get a discount. And we, uh, uh, they charge by the car, so it doesn't matter how many people you, uh, you uh, haul into your uh, 
you know, wagon or a car or anything, uh, it's one price fits all. So, mm -hmm. um, but if you get a discount with you, bring some, uh, some of those uh, hygiene items, which are certainly most appreciated. Mm -hmm. And I believe they're also accepting food items as well, uh, but, but especially they, there's a need for those hygiene items. Uh, we also want to encourage folks that if they uh, are, are partaking in Celebration of Lights, that they can tune to Oshkosh FM 101.9 for a musical soundtrack of holiday music while they're enjoying the displays. So, so definitely check out Oshkosh FM uh, for a little bit of music. Um, you know, another winter thing, uh, uh, Mark, uh, last few years we've had a, um, an ice rink that the Oshkosh Parks Department has provided, and I believe that they're still looking into providing something again this winter. Yeah, we're trying to see if we can find the best location. Honestly, you know, with um, warmer winters that we've been experiencing in recent years, that kind of puts a, a damper on it. So we want to find a location that is uh, both safe as well as reliable that you can go there and, and know that it's still going to be there. So stay tuned for um, any announcement that we might be making, uh, but usually it'll be after January 1st uh, when we have a little more reliable cold that we can, uh, mm -hmm. we can use to take advantage of that. So just cross your fingers for a little bit colder weather. Uh, it doesn't have to be super cold, but just consistently you know below freezing so Keep the water frozen. stays frozen yeah so mm -hmm. hopefully we'll be able to announce something fairly soon okay keep an eye on that Oshkosh Parks Department uh, Facebook page for more information uh, about that and uh, you know I've had a couple questions already about uh, people asking when they might expect to see their property tax bill in the mail and uh, I believe those will be mailed out very soon yeah, we had all this all this positive stuff. Now we got to talk about property tax. <laughs> the unfortunate bills. side. Sorry about that, everybody. Uh, but yeah, the uh, property tax bills. Uh, I just found out this morning that uh, the, the the technical side of uh, getting everything added up and everything is all set. Now we send it out to a printer uh, to print out the bills and mail them out. And we are expecting that for the week of December 12th. So you should be getting this any day now. But uh, be patient. Uh, the, the contractor does several communities. So um, so look for it in the mail the week of December 12th. Uh, everybody should have it by the end of that week, we're guessing. Mm -hmm. But of course then, how to pay your property tax bill is the other big issue. So mm -hmm. there's various options that you have available for you. As we're showing here on the screen, you can send it in the mail the good old fashioned way. Um, if you still like uh, talking to our friendly people at the counter, you can do it in person at City Hall. People still do that, uh, probably part of their holiday tradition. You can also place it in the drop box at City Hall as you, as you always have. And then there's some other uh, you know, off-premise options. You can pay it online at oshkoshbillpay.com, but just be aware there's a little bit of a, uh, a small fee that's attached to that because um, that's an uh, outside vendor that does that for us. Mm -hmm. But you can also, for convenience purposes, stop by any of the associated banks in Oshkosh or Community First Credit Union. So we're real happy to cooperate with different financial entities. Um, if that's more convenient for you, then by all means, go ahead and do it that way. Mm -hmm. Okay, very good. We want to also pass along a, a few reminders that uh, uh, other than your pr property tax billing, uh, folks can pay their utility billing uh, by having those utility bills deducted automatically from their checking or savings account. And there are options for that and they can uh, uh, find those on the city's website. And just for general and other billing, uh, for a, as you mentioned, there is a small fee involved uh, with OshkoshBillPay.com, but that is a convenience option uh, for being able to pay online uh, for those different types of things. So uh, folks have a lot of options available. Okay, and then we're also in this time of year, again, uh, talking about some year-end things. Uh, the Sanitation Division has the Yard Waste Drop-Off Center, and that's located over on 3rd Avenue between Ohio Street and, Ohio, and Idaho Street. And uh, they have some winter hours for that. Yeah, you know, now, we're clo now that it's December, uh, we're closed on weekends. So it's pretty much just our regular public works operating hours of 7 a.m. to 3 p.m., Monday through Friday. Um, we're closed, as I mentioned, Saturday and Sunday, but also holidays. So um, now, obviously, that's not as big a deal during the winter, but mm -hmm. some people might be, they get some really nice weather for a short period of time, they might want to do that. So, um, but in any event, you still need your uh, yard waste permit, and you can get that from the city's website over here at City Hall at our collections counter 
or over at Kits and Files. So we want to make sure people are aware of it. And again, it's still uh, accessible off of 3rd Avenue, even though we aren't expecting people to be as uh, uh, diligent about yard waste during this time of year. Mm -hmm. Right, right. And there are some other reminders for the holidays, uh, some hours changes. Uh, again, with sanitation, uh, there will be no garbage or recycling collection on Monday, December 26th or on Monday, mm -hmm. January 2nd. And on those weeks, collection will be one day later. So, for example, if you have Friday collection, that will move to Saturday on, on those weeks. Uh, so just a reminder with that. And uh, we have a couple other closures as well. Yeah, the, um, the city halls uh, and the Yard Waste Drop-Off Center, as I mentioned earlier, are both going to be closed December 23rd and 26th as a holiday. And then the Oshkosh Public Library closed uh, December 23rd, 24th, and 25th as well as January 1st and 2nd. Mm -hmm. And similar uh, for the Public Museum, they're going to be actually closed through the 26th. So J December 23rd through 26th and then January 1st and 2nd. Mm -hmm. And of course, Go Transit, no bus service on December 26th or January 2nd. Those are the, the designated uh, Christmas and New Year's holiday respect mm -hmm. respectively. But also, we generally shut off bus service a little earlier on uh, Christmas Eve, and that'll be the case. The last uh, bus will be 515, so it'll be about an hour and a half earlier than usual. And then Route 10 between Oshkosh and Nina, that will suspend service at 3 p.m. on Christmas Eve, December 24th. So be aware of all those things because we don't want you caught stranded on Christmas Eve. That wouldn't be a good thing. Not a good thing. And all those updates, uh, if you miss some of those, they are available on the city's website or keep an eye on uh, the uh, uh, social media from the city of Oshkosh government. We'll have reminders of all those hours changes as well. Well, Mark, I think it's time to take a short break. Stay with us for some highlights from the upcoming uh, Common Council agenda. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Firefighter Paramedic Eric Shea with the Oshkosh Fire Department, here to tell you about this year's local 316's Oshkosh Fire Department Food and Toy Drive. Five routes will take place through Oshkosh neighborhoods for door-to-door -door collection of non-perishable food items, new and unwrapped gifts, wrapping paper, tape, and cash donations. The routes will take place on five different nights, beginning at 5 p.m. on Tuesday, November 29th, with the last collection day being Tuesday, December 13th. Just look for the antique fire engine with Santa riding on the front. All donations will be given to the Salvation Army for distribution. Monetary donations may also be given for a scholarship fund for two graduating Oshkosh seniors enrolled in a police or fire science program. For details on the routes or how you can donate anytime to the program, follow Oshkosh Fire Department Food and Toy Drive on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Help us make someone's holiday a little brighter this year. Welcome back to the City Manager's Report. I'm Andy Raddick along with City Manager Mark Roloff. Let's turn our attention to the agenda items from the upcoming Tuesday, December 13th Oshkosh Common Council meeting. And Mark, it looks like uh, we have uh, several things at the beginning of the meeting, including a public hearing. And this is in regards to the City of Oshkosh Wastewater Utility uh, Facilities Plan. And I understand it's been several years since the last update was made over at the uh, the wastewater facilities. Yeah, periodically we're required by federal law uh, to update a facilities plan for 20 years. So this is, it's time we've updated their our plan. A lot of it has to do with the, um, the age of uh, our equipment and uh, facilities and making sure that we stay up to date with all of the modern requirements. There's so many different levels of treatment that are required out there. And 50 years ago, we actually did a first real modernization of the plant. Mm -hmm. uh, and then 25 years ago, we did another one that added another level of, of treatment uh, improvements over there. And we're again entering a new phase where we're going to have some new equipment and new facilities that we're going to be adding that are required by law. And so all told, and the drum roll please, unfortunately, uh, over the next 20 years, we are projecting that we'll be spending uh, about $250 million on, on facilities. So, um, you know, we, we have to deliver the bad news along with everything else. And mm -hmm. the, you know, the impact, because of the, in the, at the front end, we're going to be doing something such as we're required to do phosphorus treatment 
uh, that we currently don't do right now, that's going to be $30 million alone. So there'll be some costs that are front end loaded. So you'll see that the impact over 10 years will be you know, a pretty sizable increase in our rates. The increase will be a little less uh, in the future years, but we want to let people know that, that this is what's going on. But a lot of these are, these are federal requirements that we, once we modernize a facility, we have to get up to the brand new standards that exist. And then in the case of phosphorus treatment, that was something that uh, uh, we were concerned about for years because we are not a phosphorus creator in Oshkosh, but um, we actually clean the water cleaner than what we take in from the lake. So we're actually mm -hmm. a way to, Im we improve the quality of our water, uh, even though we're not a contributor to it. And that's just, that's just a reality of Lake Winnebago has had a high level of phosphorus in it over the years, mm -hmm. and we have to uh, do our part to clean it, and the feds kind of put it on us to clean it, even though we're not necessarily causing this problem. Okay, so there really there's a lot involved with this. Uh, yeah. But it's all part of the plan. Yeah, it sure is. Okay. All right, then under the uh, consent agenda, we have a couple items. Uh, there's a... Um, uh, an item regarding uh, re rehabil rehabilitation of South Washburn Street from West 20th Avenue to Dickinson Avenue. And I believe that some additional grant money is being received here. Right. We actually covered this earlier in the year when we received an initial grant award from the State uh, Department of Transportation. It's part of the bipartisan infrastructure law, mm -hmm. some of the infrastructure uh, funding that came from the federal government. And we jumped on it and got some projects uh, designed and we're ready for this. Um, the good news is that because of our preparation um, and the fact that the bids actually came in higher, um, the state took a look at our original grant request and said, we're going to fund you at 80% of your original grant request, So, um, which means we only have to come up with 20%. So we're very pleased that uh, both for uh, two projects that we submitted, one is Washburn Street, from 20th to Dickinson. So if you've ridden over there, you know it's a pretty rocky road over there. Uh, and then similarly, uh, maybe not as well traveled by, by residents, but sometimes businesses. Uh, Osborne from Knapp Street West, uh, almost out to Keller, but not quite. Uh, pretty much uh, just north on the north side of the quarry over there. But those roads are both in rough shape, but they're, they're identified by the Federal Department of Transportation as urban highways, and they're great candidates to get this BIL funding, so we're excited about this. Mm -hmm. Okay. Also under consent, uh, there's an approval of a conditional use permit for multifamily use, and this is for a building uh, over at uh, South Main Street. This is really an interesting and I would say unique type of thing, although when I say unique, it also has a little retro kick to it. Um, there's a, a person who... Uh, born and raised in Oshkosh, went away and now has come back and wants to uh, take some of uh, his business acumen and apply it here. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a story I got from our friends at uh, Greater Oshkosh Economic Development Corporation. But uh, the, the retro thing is kind of a live-work type of facility or uh, building. So I know we've got the location. It's right in the 900 block of Main Street between 9th and 10th. Um, kind of kitty corner from where the T wall sawdust district development is going. Mm -hmm. And so what that is is you may think of uh harken to old days where uh a shopkeeper lived in the back room and stuff like that. This is kind of the modern version of this where um uh, they'll be proposing a live work type of arrangements where the person can live right where they conduct business with their clients uh, or uh you know, customers. So we're real excited about this. Uh, Plan Commission enthusiastically supported it. Uh, and so this uh, gets the ball rolling and we'll see what else evolves with this. I think mm -hmm. we, I don't think we're done with this yet, but certainly the land use type of thing, we wanted to make sure we were in front of this great addition to the Sawdust District. I'm really excited to see how this evolves, but it is kind of cool, that little live work retro look. Yeah, yeah, kind of a work in progress, but uh, will be interesting to see what develops. Yeah. Okay. Then under pending ordinances, we have, and we typically see this each year, uh, we're canceling the uh, December 27th Oshkosh Common Council meeting. Yeah, and it has to be done by ordinance, and so the council needs to adopt it. So just a formality, but uh, yeah, this is the last uh, city manager report we cover with uh, agenda items. So uh, we'll, be, uh, we'll be back in uh, 
2023 with uh, more uh, council agenda discussions. Mm -hmm. Okay, then under new resolutions, and we get into some utility rates here, and uh, uh, we're taking a look at uh, the specifically here the stormwater utility rate. We are. Uh, the council had waited to adopt the utility budgets, water, uh, sanitary sewer, and stormwater until uh, we had a little clearer picture on rates. Mm -hmm. um, their water rates were still awaiting some review by the Public Service Commission, and s sanitary sewer rates are not looking at any increase for 2023. However, we've done, for stormwater, we've done an analysis of our projects for the next 10 years, and because of the situation we're in, we, we're actually very cash strong, and that's, and that's what we're going to take advantage of. But in the short run, we need to increase our rates, um, you know, kind of rate of inflation, but that's right now that's not very acceptable to a lot of folks, mm -hmm. and I totally understand that. But uh, raising the rate 6.5% for 2023, but there is actually a, a little bit of, of good news with this because we have built up a sizable cash balance in our fund. A lot of that's because some of our projects in recent years, we borrow on uh, what we budgeted, but it, when it comes in under budget, that's a good thing. But now we've developed, we've got a war chest of about $13 million in excess cash that we need to provide some benefit to the, to the rate payers. And the, the best way for us to do it based on the financial analysis and our, uh, the recommendation of our financial consultant is to borrow less in the next couple years and use that and instead of borrowing, apply this cash balance to pay cash for a lot of our projects. So mm -hmm. um, while there's a 6.5% increase on the backside, we're going to see uh, lesser increases and in some cases no increases for about five of the next 10 years. And so that's really what our long game is on this. Um, and I know in the short run that's, that's a, a pretty big deal, but um, I, I, I understand the importance of trying to maintain the rates, but we also have to make sure that we're required to cover our, our debt, and it's called bond covenants, that uh, we would be in default if we didn't cover our bond covenants. So mm -hmm. we've got to do a short-term increase, but in the long run, our debt service is going to go down, and it'll be better, beneficial for us. So um, mm -hmm. hopefully I tried to explain as best I could. In a nutshell, okay. In a nutshell. And then we also are approving the annual budget for the water, sewer, and stormwater utilities. Yep, and that's, that's just, uh, we deferred it until we had a better picture of the rates. Okay, very good. Okay, and then we also are uh, looking at uh, a, a Go Transit uh, Access to Jobs program and working uh, with the Oshkosh United Way. Access to Jobs program existed for a number of years, but we haven't changed the income requirements for a number of years, and a lot of people are actually not eligible for it. With a grant from the United Way, we're actually going to see what kind of um, response we get. Do we get more people participating in this Access to Jobs? And these are people who don't have otherwise transportation, and these are outside of our bus service area. So we're real excited to be working with United Way on that. Okay, and then finally we're approving the designated outdoor refreshment area, otherwise known as DORA, uh, for, another, for another year. This, uh, this, actually the request is to keep going uh, in the future. The pilot program was only for one year. I see. Uh, th it's been successful. We haven't had any incidents to note. So this area here will have uh, what, the, the, what the Business Improvement District is asking for are hours of 1 to 10 p.m. Wednesday through Saturday. They want to take advantage of different events that may want to take advantage of people being able to walk up and down the street after they've purchased a, a beverage, uh, an adult beverage from one of the establishments. Uh, and it would be year-round effective in April of 2023. So mm -hmm. stay tuned for that. Okay. All right. Very good. Well, I believe that's all the time that we have today, Mark. Thank you very much for your insights. It's always a pleasure, Andy. Okay. All right. And thank you for joining us again today for another City Manager's Report. Again, that Oshkosh Common Council meeting is at 6 p.m. this Tuesday, December 13th at City Hall, which is at 215 Church Avenue. You can also, also watch it live on GovTV, Spectrum Channel 10, UVerse Channel 99, and streaming on YouTube and OshkoshMedia.org. Please use your favorite streaming device to watch, which is Roku, Amazon Fire TV, Apple TV. Just search for the Oshkosh Media app. 
app. And you can also check out our YouTube channel for Government Meeting Archives and the full library of Oshkosh Media Programming on the Oshkosh Media YouTube channel. Join us again for our special Top 10 of 2022 program, which begins airing on December 16th. Have a wonderful holiday season.